For us, of course, Ukraine is the main focus, and the same thing goes for a lot of the European countries represented here, including Sweden. So we're here to talk with the Swedish Defense Minister, Paul Jonsson. Sweden has been one of the top supporters of Ukraine in terms of military equipment in Western countries, from infantry fighting vehicles, from artillery, and maybe in the future, grip and fighter jets, which are considered maybe even better suited to fight off Russian aviation than the F-16s themselves. But just as it's joining the club, dark clouds are hanging over the very foundation of the integrity of the military alliance that NATO forms. And so there's this key common understanding of the common battle for Ukraine's survival and for the security of NATO as a whole. Minister Jonsson, thank you very much for uh, joining us for this short time. Uh, can you tell me how does it feel at the moment uh, for Sweden to be on the cusp of joining NATO at a time when more than any time in their history, NATO, the foundation of, of NATO's principles are under threat? Well, I think uh, we are hopeful we can be full-fledged members of the alliance within some weeks and we are very excited to join the alliance because we think we can make NATO stronger and we think that NATO it is good for Sweden and it's good for NATO that we join because we are in a critical time now for European security. Of course, uh, right now with a full-scale war inside Ukraine and uh, Ukraine is providing the shield for NATO uh, and for the rest of Europe and therefore it's also so important for us to be able to continue supporting Ukraine and it's really an investment also into our security and of course the difference between membership and partnership is that uh, when we're part of full-fledged members then we're part of article 5 and we're also part of NATO's common defense planning and that will enhance our security of course. But is Sweden among other NATO, like NATO or soon to be NATO countries uh, worried by uh, what's happening in the US and the statements made by by Donald Trump about how he could just almost uh, refuse to to play that important role as a security guarantor for Europe. Does Europe have to change its attitude to its defense in the next few years? I think what is important is that we step up defense investment in Europe right now. And we are on the right trajectory. Mm -hmm. When Sweden joined, there will be 20 or 32 allies who reach 2%. But I think 2% is a floor, but it's, it's not the ceiling. And 2% will not be enough there. What we also need to do both in order to be able to better support Ukraine and then also to support the rebuild of our own armed forces is to ramp up our defense industrial production. Mm. There's, uh, there's lots of room for improvement because we in Europe right now we have a defense industrial base for peacetime situation. But now there's a full scale war in Europe and then that uh, we have to ramp up production and mm. just the fact that, that we need to produce both when it comes to air defense systems and artillery ammunition, both for Ukraine, but also for, for ourselves. That has to be uh, increased that production rate. Speaking of what you mentioned about the ammunition production, I know uh, Sweden is ramping up their own 155 uh, shell production with that one factory. Um, but uh, I read in Politico today that uh, some European countries, including France, Greece, uh, were blocking efforts by the EU to uh, purchase ammunition for Ukraine uh, because they wanted more orders for their own industries. With this priority of supplying these shells to Ukraine with U US supplies um, under threat, uh, do you see this as, as productive? Um, no, I think when you talk to Ukrainian soldiers, uh, does it matter for them where the artillery shell is made inside or outside? We, mm. I think the answer is going to be no. So I think what we need to be open also for finding the possibility to have in third countries being able to produce uh, and we can procure for third countries also to send directly to Ukraine. I think that that is mm -hmm. what, uh, what really matters. And therefore we should be pragmatic about the inspiration. Mm -hmm. Towards the end of last year, there was a lot of talk about uh, fighter jets and uh, regarding the Gripen, which Ukrainian pilots trained on. I think you mentioned yourself and um, a few others mentioned that it was conting contingent on Sweden's final accession to NATO, uh, is, was that the only barrier? And with that very much in the short-term perspective, can we expect some news about the Gripen in the near future? Uh, well, listen, for us to make a decision, we have to be fully-fledged members of 
of NATO and being part of Article 5. This is also a decision that has to be done in collaboration with others. As you know, uh, uh, many parts of the Gripple system is made in the United States. We are continuing, of course, working in the fighter jet coalition and we keep all options on the table how we best can support the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Ukraine needs fourth generation and fifth generation fighter aircraft and uh, if we one way or another can help we are mm -hmm. all good to that. So you expect once the barrier is, is crossed of NATO membership itself uh, the intent is there from Sweden's leadership to move in a positive direction? Well but the intent is at least to, bring, to make sure that you have uh, fighter jets and now of course a lot of focus is on the F-16 and the F-16 uh, that they are being provided now maybe from Norway, from the Netherlands, from Belgium and also from uh, from other countries, but uh, can we assist in, a, in any way we would like to look into it as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, last question, I guess. Um, how do you think big of a threat is it in 2024 for European security as a whole if the West, especially the US, uh, kind of begins to abandon Ukraine and, and what active measures do you think will be taken here and in the next uh, few months in Europe to, to stop this? There is no bigger threat to Swedish security or European security than uh, that Russia would be successful in Ukraine. That is the biggest menace and the biggest mm -hmm. threat to us right now. And therefore we have to be clear-sighted and we have to take action and continue supporting Ukraine because it is an investment into our own security and mm -hmm. we have to take those measures. We realize that uh, that uh, Europe has to do more also for Ukraine, but it's extremely important also that the United States continue to be supportive of Ukraine and deliver the defense material. When I was in Washington last time, I, I met with, with Minister Romero, we talked, and then I spent a lot of time on Capitol Hill making the case for why it's important also for US security and for Europe security that we continue supporting Ukraine, reaching out both to Democrats and Republicans. This mm -hmm. is absolutely critical. There's no bigger issues uh, that concern our security that, than the, that uh, Ukraine is successful and win this war. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.